Well, here we are, the final movie of Fake Sequel Month. It's February. Time is relative. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew didn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode... Evil Dead 3 Ghost House. You remember how I said that uh, less than official DVD releases were just gonna happen in fake sequel month? Well, today's movie was only released on Blu ray, which is pretty inconvenient for me because I can't transfer Blu ray onto my computer. So the footage you're gonna see in this video. Might have been illegally downloaded. It's odd, you know. All three of these movies are Italian, all three pull from the action horror genre, and the movies all three claim to be were actually really good sequels. And yeah, calling this Evil Dead 3 is maybe a stretch. Its official title is, and has been from the beginning, just Ghost House. However, there was definitely a point in time where this film claimed to be Evil Dead 3, so yeah, I'm counting that. And I'm pinning that fake name squarely on producer Joe D'Amato. If Bruno Mattei is Italian Ed Wood, Joe D'Amato is Italian Charles Band. He's had his finger in some of the craziest Italian horror productions, including that most famous sequel in name only, Troll 2. D'Amato, despite having directed 196 films, did not direct this masterpiece. Credit for that goes to... Humphrey Humpert? Uh, yeah, that's a real name. Although it seems like the racist black lady in Shocking Dark was actually named Goretta Goretta. How'd I overlook that? I should mention that it was common practice for Italian horror directors to change their names to something more American sounding so it would sell better to American audiences. Cause who wants to watch movies by people with ridiculous names like Quentin Tarantino or Darren Aronofsky? That's why we've had so many fake names this month. Although as far as fake American names go, Humphrey Humphrey has to be one of the laziest. Real credit goes to Umberto Lindsay who, holy crap, died last October, a day before my birthday even. R.I.P. this guy. Lindsay was a fairly well-known Italian exploitation director, at least as well-known as Italian exploitation directors can be. Don't get me started on Italian horror. I am a white male. I will talk your ear off about whatever obscure thing I happen to know a lot about. And if you thought this movie starred someone who's in something significant, um... There's Donald O'Brien, who was Dr. Butcher, M.D. Yet, yeah, no exaggeration, he's the most popular actor in any of these three films. And of course, the title. And I mean Evil Dead 3, not the incredibly generic Ghost House. See, Evil Dead 2 kinda ended with a cliffhanger, easily setting up Army of Darkness, even though it took over five years to make that film. And not only does this film not even attempt to resolve the cliffhanger, it also doesn't even come close to ripping off Evil Dead. And when your whole movie is constantly ripping off every other horror movie except Evil Dead, it makes you go, yo, why didn't you just call this, like, Poltergeist 3? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is Ghost House, aka Evil Dead 3. Wow, not very optimistic. Already claiming this will make me feel a filmy rage. The film opens on an old man looking for his daughter, only to find she's killed a cat. How could you do such a thing to one of God's innocent creatures? Excuse me, it's a cat. I guarantee that fucker's not innocent. As punishment, she gets locked in the basement. A very reasonable punishment. But it's okay, she's got her clown doll. Because Poltergeist. Ah, you know, you, you shouldn't leave the lights on while you're changing the bulbs. You could electrocute yourself. Or this could happen. I don't know about this actor. He seems like a total hack. <laughs> hey, 
distasteful murder jokes are my shtick. Well, maybe you should bring back your show. I will, as soon as somebody makes another episode. I'll get around to it. Then a ghost, or maybe the little girl, breaks this mirror and telepathically throws the pieces at the old lady. Given how many horror movies this film rips off, she's probably actually supposed to be Carrie. She is definitely not the person holding this knife, though. So maybe there is a fucking ghost already. And that is the most nonchalant stab ever. Wow, this truly is a dark and emotional, never mind, happy music. Italy, you do know how to score a horror movie, right? Because it's not this. It's not this. And it's not this. What's a reading? Then we meet our main characters, Paul and Martha. Paul is a radio operator asking the big questions. Hey, did you find out who's more popular in Denver, Kim Bassinger or Kelly LeBrock? Forgive my youthful ignorance, but were those two ever popular enough to warrant a who's more popular in the city of Denver? I mean, especially in 1988 before Kim Basinger was in Batman and L.A. Confidential. But he's fiddling around with the radio at night when this happens. Who are you? What do you want? For God's sakes! Somebody help me! Help! Help! Ah! Oh no, not unconvincing cries for help followed by a goofy holler? Ah! Could it be some stupid ham operator playing a practical joke? No one would pull a stunt like that, it's unethical. And people always do what's ethical. Besides, it sounded real to me. You and nobody else on the planet Earth. And just to emphasize how fake it sounds, he replays it. Somebody help me! Help! Help! So they decide to track down the source of the transmission, but they run across a hitchhiker who basically forces them to stop. It's a good way to get run over, bro. Massachusetts sucks too, huh? Uh, come to think of it, just about every place sucks. <laughs> come to think of it, life sucks, and then you die. You guys believe in ghosts? What an odd and unprompted thing to say. I'm sure it will in no way come back into play in this movie called Ghost House. You should believe in ghosts, P-Brain. Yeah, you're so stupid for not believing in something that there's no scientific precedence for, nor is there any place for in any of the three major religions of this country. They make it to the ghost house where the radio transmission came from. Oh no, not May 23rd. Um, did she cut herself on the dull side of the knife? Or is there still wet blood on that knife from over 20 years ago? Maybe it's ghost blood. Oh no, someone's coming for them. Oh, never mind, it's just a normal dude. I said, what are you doing up here? Nothing. We were just looking for that. Oh yeah? It's mine. You live here? No. We're here on vacation. My camp is parked out in the yard. I'm here with my brother and his girlfriend. Our sister Tina's with us too. My name's Jim Dallin. Hey, total stranger, what are you doing here? Let me tell you my entire life story. I'm Jim Dalen. So Paul plays the recording he got the previous night for Jim Dalen. Jim Dalen confirms it's his voice on the recording, but he couldn't have sent the message because he hasn't even set up the antenna yet. So he takes Paul on the roof to prove it. But, um, I guess installing antennas is man's work, so Martha stays behind. Let me tell you, if you actually watch this movie, you will come to hate this song. 
It's the evil clowns theme, but uh, unlike something catchy like... Or uh, even something like short and kind of creepy like... It's just this annoying circus music that never builds to anything. It's always kind of funny to me when people walk into a ghost-infested house that, rather than kill someone like they'll try to do later in the movie, they just do spooky stuff to scare people. Oh, all the jars are breaking! Oh, g come on, you're gonna stain your new pants with that in there. Yo, why did it take me till just now to realize this dude is dressed as Marty McFly? So they explain the situation to Jim Dalen's friends. Maybe there's something supernatural about all this, guys. I know just a minute ago I was making fun of someone for saying they should believe in ghosts, but at this point, what do you think was breaking those jars or making a head appear in the dryer? At this point, yeah, something is supernatural. Their plan is to stay up all night listening to the same frequency to see what happens. Feel like keeping me company? I don't want to go back to Boston. Well, why wouldn't you want to stay in the house where a bunch of glasses mysteriously popped and you saw a head in the dryer? But the creepy groundskeeper is watching them. I don't know what point he serves. I, I don't know if he's in with the ghosts or he's just this crazy dude that will eventually try to kill everyone on top of them having to deal with the ghosts. They just really don't explain his character very well. So later that night, Jim Dalen's sister is making some delicious Ajax tea when the TV turns on to the girl and her clown doll. D do you get it? You get, it's like Poltergeist. You know the movie Poltergeist? It's like that. <laughs> now crap, sounds like she's in trouble. Ooh. I mean, it is a rockin', and the rules say I shouldn't come a-knockin', so, uh... Sorry, lady, my hands are tied. Then Jim Dalen goes poking around in the basement when he finds a fan that goes when it's unplugged! Who are you? What do you want? For God's sakes! Somebody help me! Help! Wow, that's even less convincing in real life. And yes, the spooky message was just a premonition of something to happen tonight. Then he gets killed by a fan blade. Because that's possible. But Jim Dalen's friend encounters... a puppy. Yeah, awkwardly throw a candlestick older at him. And the dog just disappears. Bye, doggy. Won't see you till the end of the movie. At least they established that's a power the ghost has. But then the grounds creeper decides to attack the kids. I still don't know why. The guy was attacking Tina with an axe. Dude, that is a butcher knife, not an axe. Are you alright? Yeah, sure. She's helping, no reason to be a condescending prick about it. You think she'll be okay? She's asleep. Don't worry, I'll stay with her. Oh yeah, this movie's about to get way better. Then I heard that song. That stupid song. Was it like a children's nursery rhyme? No, it was more like terrible circus music with some dude making gross noises in the background. A light comes on in the house, so Martha goes to check it out. She finds a little girl's room and begins digging through the toy chest. Oh yeah, the framed picture of a little girl, the hottest toy of the 1965 Christmas season. I'm so glad I grew up with a framed picture of a creepy girl instead of an iPhone. Kids today will never understand. And what's at the bottom but a clown doll. And now it's angry! She's attacked by the doll and cut to the next day. Guess she got out of that on her own then. There's something you people don't know about this place. A terrible crime was committed here about 20 years ago. <laughs> Sorry, something in the air. Anyways, the police are convinced that the creepy groundskeeper killed Jim Dalen, and they decide it's time for everyone to leave. Because I guess spending too much time in the titular ghost house might be too scary. 
Well, there was this Anglican priest who had a vision of the last murder a few days before it happened. Where? In a streetcar. The murder took place in a streetcar? No, the minister was on a streetcar when he suddenly had the vision. Are you getting stupid or something? Oh, look who's talking. Did you learn all that while I was washing my hair? Would you be serious? Would you climb off your high horse? You know something? I've had enough. Goodbye. All very reasonable responses. Glad you guys could work this out like adults. But 1988 Shazam finally figures out that the song was called Burial. Which is what the composer should have done with this song, Ayo! Yeah, okay, that one was a stretch. Then Pepe, the hitchhiker, returns, and decides to take up residence in the ghost house. For, like, all of eternity. Paul and Martha decide to go to the funeral home where, apparently, the father from the beginning worked. How they knew to go there is beyond me. As it turns out, just before the father's death, he had taken a choy a child was supposed to be buried with, claiming his daughter would love it. And, ignoring how insanely immoral that is, seriously, this is the doll your child wanted? Also, I swear they stole this plot point from another movie. I just can't think of what it is right now. Then the grounds creeper returns and uses his kung fu skills on the Undertaker. Uh, bro, you haven't actually murdered anyone yet? This is kinda escalating your situation unnecessarily. Hell, the next scene is the police discussing how the fan couldn't have been used as a weapon. You almost got off, dude. If you'll recall 20 years ago, when the Bakers were killed, we had a lot of questions we didn't have any answers for. And people were wondering a long time after that. To hell with them. Uh, people are susceptible, they're gullible. And don't you forget about the Salem witch trials. This is good old Massachusetts, Doc. Oh yeah, unsolved murders, Salem witch trials, no false equivalencies here. They're not in any danger anymore. They left the house by now. You'd think that, but no, they're still there. I don't believe in ghosts and spirits and that kind of stuff. This is almost the 21st century. Did people in the 80s spend that much time talking about how close the 21st century was? Because this is the second movie I've watched where that happens. If it was him, Susan, why didn't he use the axe? It was a knife. Stop calling it an axe. The fuck's wrong with you? No one believes Jim Dalen's sister when she says a strange man went into the house. So she goes in alone to find him. But she trips, knocking a piece of roofing on her. And as we all know, houses are made of guillotines. Meanwhile, this girl is washing her face when the most original thing ever happens. The faucet starts running blood. That's never been done in a single horror movie before. Oh yeah, wipe it on your white shirt. Good work, now you can pose for an Andrew W.K. album. And then the ghost appears as Jim Dalen's sister. Did this just rip off Alien 2 on Earth? Okay, it was probably pure coincidence, but come on. Two movies in a row where the villain gains the ability to transform into its dead victims in the third act, which ultimately doesn't affect the plot at all? That's kinda crazy. Mark! I copy, go ahead. Oh, hi, Mark. What, in the house someone got killed in last night? Nah. But the grounds creeper chases Martha and locks her in a tomb with the body of the little girl. Oh gee, are they gonna bury the evil doll with it and put the spirits to rest? Nah, wait, gotta slip one more poltergeist moment in there. Okay, get on with it then. Just set things right and or burn the fucking body. Seems like a good way to arouse more evil spirits. But what do I know? Everything wraps up nicely and everyone goes on about their lives until Martha sees something strange. Okay, if I saw somebody get hit by a bus in real life, I'd probably be pretty disturbed by it, but every time I see it in a movie, I laugh. And that's the end. That was Evil Dead 3, aka Ghost House. This movie doesn't even try being an Evil Dead ripoff, in spite of ripping off many other movies, most especially Poltergeist. 
Was Poltergeist 3 already taken? I mean, yeah, Poltergeist 3 came out the same year as this movie. But if you're gonna be this shameless, who cares? Still, outside of the belligerent unoriginality and some of the really weak performances, this movie is kinda decent. I mean, there's a cohesive plot, a decent pace, and better production value than the script really deserves. Would I recommend it? No, not really. But after slogging through the dreck of the other fake sequels, I assure you, this could be worse. This month has been a really hard sit, honestly. Like, I hope to never review something as bad as Terminator 2 again, and quite frankly, I'm fed up with fake sequels. Good thing I'm gonna make this a recurring theme. See you next January, Jaws 5. something that really pisses me off is your constant lying. It's like you get some perverted pleasure out of making things up. Idiots! You're all against me! I hate you! I hate you all! I hate you! <sighs> Groovy. Guys, the Lady Terminator review exists again. Go watch it to piss off DRM.